clinical features there is a widespread thing that you need to know across all ages first is the mcq point which has been asked in pgi super specialty exam already it is a direct one liner they had picked from nelson most consistent sign or most consistent feature clinically of childhood pneumonia across all ages is tachypnea that is rapid breathing age dependent respiratory rate the breathing rate is higher when do we say tachypnea if age of the child is less and on one side you will write respiratory rate i know you know it but still we, this is something important so we have to do it so if age of the child is less than 2 month respiratory rate equal to or more than 60 per minute we call it as tachypnea 2 to 12 months it is equal to or more than 50 per minute 1 to 5 years it is equal to or more than 40 per minute so this, these are the categories that you define for tachypnea in children. So tachypnea is consistently present in childhood pneumonia. Fever may or may not be present. Cough may or may not be present. Respiratory symptoms other than tachypnea may or may not be present. So tachypnea is the most consistent feature. Now across the ages if we see, we find that in infants with pneumonia, usually there is tachypnea whenever there is pneumonia along with fever. Fever is usually found to be moderate grade in case it is a viral infection. Viral infections can happen in infancy also, particularly 6 months to 12 month period, maybe late uh, 9 to 10 month period when influenza and parainfluenza can cause infections. But more commonly what we find is if it is a high grade fever, you should think of a bacterial cause. Exceptions do exist. Some of these children may have cough, then they have respiratory distress. They can have irritability, they will be unable to tell, but they will have irritability, they will have poor feeding. And many infants are also found to have GI symptoms. This is something that you must remember when you are evaluating, even in your wards or even in your clinics. Many children up to, some of the textbooks say that up to 25 to 30 percent children will have prominent GI symptoms with tachypnea rather than being any other respiratory symptoms. So, GI symptoms will be in the form of uh, diarrhea in the child, vomiting and some abdominal distension can happen due to ileus happening. So, these are the features of pneumonia that you will find in infants. In case of older children, you will find the usual features of pneumonia like fever, cough, chest pain, and obviously tachypnea will be there. These children will also have, uh, you know, they have a tendency to, uh, if it is unilateral pneumonia, they will have tendency to lie on one side with knees pulled close, with knees pulled close to the chest. You know, in a semi-squatting position like state, they will lie on one side of their body. The even older children, they can have abdominal symptoms. Abdominal pain can be present in these children in patients who are having lower lobe pneumonia. So, children who are having lower lobe pneumonia, there can be abdominal pain. Some of these children can have meningismus. What is meningismus? Presence of meningeal signs. They can be present in pneumococcal pneumonia when it causes apex of lung involvement. So, when apical involvement occurs due to pneumonia, meningismus may sometimes be seen in these patients. Meningismus, obviously, your uh, the Kernick sign and Brusinski sign will not be seen, but neck rigidity and uh, some degree of irritability and sometimes even vomiting can be a feature. So, it suggests it looks like meningitis. That is why the word meningismus is used in these patients. Plus, when you perform physical examination, physical examination will show the presence of bronchi and scattered crackles or crepitations in these children. In case of any lobar consolidation, in case of any localized consolidation or any complication like pleural effusion developing on one side, you will find decreased 
breath sounds to be present on these on the affected side and the usual auscultation findings that you have uh, learnt so, uh, over the years they can be seen but if you have seen children with pneumonia particularly younger children you would know that only a based upon auscultation also sometimes it is difficult to identify the child as pneumonia so that is why the IMCI guidelines they place a lot of stress on the presence or absence of tachypnea to diagnose pneumonia in young children and auscultation findings may not always be there and sometimes it is difficult to distinguish if bacterial versus viral pneumonias from each other based upon history and examination alone and that is why we look at the age and look at the prospective organisms which are there since viral pneumonias are very frequently complicated by bacterial pneumonias also and bacterial pneumonia will have a fulminant course that is why according to IMCI guidelines we do start antibiotics in all of these patients this is the rationale why we start because you can't clinically rule out whether it is a viral infection or a bacterial infection or a viral complicated by bacterial infection. Obviously, the localizing signs, presence of risk factors, exposures, they will tell you uh, what exactly is happening in the child. So, this is about the clinical manifestations. Let us move towards making the diagnosis. That is the area on which questions are going to be asked. In diagnosis part, in neat super speciality, uh, last four papers if I take, two times question have been asked as clinical format. And in super speciality of Central Institute, again two to three times questions have been asked, all clinical cases. So let us begin with the diagnosis. Next we come to diagnosis of childhood pneumonias.